Tony. This is Workshop Wednesday for Pro Media Gear. And today we're going to discuss Arca plates. Small plates, big plates, every plate except a bracket plate. That's what we're talking about today. So most of you are used to seeing our PBX3, which is a universal bracket plate that's approximately three inches long or wide um, by an inch and a half. It's got the ports here. That's a bracket plate. We also manufacture a standard PX3, which is a three inch ARCA compatible dovetailed plate, but it doesn't feature the bracket plate opportunities. So no, no L bracket, no boomerang, but there are a lot of things you can still do with a standard ARCA compatible plate like this. So it's made in our house facility here and uh, just outside of Chicago, Illinois, made out of uh, aircraft grade aluminum. And it's a great opportunity to put it on a lot of cameras, but what you might not know is we have a lot of smaller plates as well. Smaller plates, I guess I can hold this up for scale, like our PX1. See the difference there? This is still ARCA compatible as it's the same width as the other one, but it's gonna be much, much, much shorter in length. And the reason for that is now you can put it on um, different things, maybe a monitor, uh, maybe a flash. You could technically put it on a, um, a GoPro. Um, I've got the light camera today to show you. And we've even got a small um, little point shoot guy. So something like this is gonna give you the opportunity to put it on other equipment and still be ARCA compatible. Put it right there on top of your ball head. Later on in this episode, I am gonna show you, we do have a clamp that's the CB60 version two that's gonna also offer the bracket plates um, ports so that you can actually expand upon this for smaller items as well. So let's go ahead and get right in it. So I've got that uh, PX1, just to show you. I've got like my GoPro housing here with the monopod mount or the tripod mount they call it. Got that in there and you're like, man, this would be pretty cool if I could actually put it on top of my ball head or maybe put it on top of my monopod and end up using it like a, a really good, uh, almost like a boom arm if you really wanted to. So the PX1 and the PX1R, the difference on the PX1R is if you can see that there's a little ridge there, that's the only difference. So this one's not gonna have any anti-rotation capability whereas this one does give you a little opportunity to put it on a lip and then the screw moves in and out to you know, go, moves a little bit to kind of block it from rotating on you. I'm gonna take the PX1 though, I'm just gonna mount that right here on top of my GoPro mount using the standard 532 screw. And that's it. You see how small that is? Everybody kind of knows what a GoPro looks like for reference. I've got that little mount on there. It's gonna easily give me the opportunity. You got your time. Put it inside an ARCA clamp. Now I'll just go ahead and you know, utilize it for videoing or sitting it, clamp it down, make sure it's tight and secure, um, anywhere I want. It's pretty cool. That's just one option. Now if you want and say, hey, you know what, I don't use my GoPro, but I've got a little smaller camera, maybe uh, about 10 of you in the market nowadays have the light camera. This camera is kind of neat functionally for what it does. It has multiple lenses on it to kind of give you every focal length you would need, all with just one shot but it has a fairly narrow body. So on that, still has the quarter 20 thread adapter on the bottom. I just go ahead and put that in there. It's that simple, you can see how good that fits on there. Now, put it back on this ball head here. Put the clamp out here. Now I've got this guy put on my ball head. Fit any ARCA compatible head on the market. And it's a nice, small, compact plate that's going to be a good opportunity for some of these thinner cameras on the market. You know, you got a lot of those, or the point and shoots. You just don't want something bulky. Uh, the standard ARCA being the approximately the inch and a half, and a lot of plates out there, it's going to stick out like this. And you can see that it just kind of looks bulky. So what we did is make it a little bit slim lined, say, so, hey, all these heads can rotate 90 degrees. What you can do then is just go ahead and loosen that up, put it to fit. That's a much better fit, better opportunity to carry. 
It's not gonna get snagged in my pocket. It actually does fit my case uh, for this camera very nicely. Other cameras that would work more are like the Coolpix cameras and the smaller ones. You, know, you even got something a little larger like this AW1 for the power shots and stuff. They tend to have a smaller, narrower um, footprint here. But what a great opportunity to put this PX1, PX1R on there. You can see it doesn't take up any more room on the body. It's just gonna give me that opportunity now to still shoot, take it on vacation. This is a great tourism camera. And then go ahead and not have to worry about putting it on a small tripod. It's pretty cool. Another thing that comes up, taking that same plate, maybe doing something like put it on your monitor. Got a small HD monitor we use for a lot of these shoots. And Great opportunity to go ahead and put the two batteries on it. Go ahead and put the uh, PX1R with the ridge will actually rest up nice on this one. Otherwise, without the ridge, doesn't matter. When you put the screw in, it does a pretty good job with two little rubber um, stickers to work pretty well as a gasket and to suck it up on there and keep it from rotating on you. Um, being so small and not having a lot of torque, um, it works real well. That R is gonna be nice if you wanna grab the front of it and make sure then that you don't have any issues with uh, anti-rotation. Well, this is great. Now I can put my monitor on maybe a clamp that I've got either on a light stand or a magic arm or something like that. And it's just gonna allow you to, to keep it out of the way, utilize it. Something else that came up the other day was, hey, I wanna quickly use a uh, speed light in the field at these weddings. And rather than putting the cold shoe on top, um, I wouldn't mind having them on a clamp because I put them on other accessories. So same thing, being that it's nice and small, or CS2 cold shoe, or anything that has a quarter 20. You're just gonna be able to stack them up like that if interested. Maybe it just gets you thinking outside the box, gives you a little bit of a solution. You can go ahead and mount the tiny plate on the bottom of the CS2. And then now I can clamp these wherever I want. Maybe it makes it a little easier to maneuver around for you. So the next one we got is the PSQ1. The PSQ1, if you look at it size wise, it's kind of about double the PX1 size. It's fully square. So it's approximately 1.5 inches by 1.5 inches. On the top here, we do give you some opportunities for the anti rotation pins. It matches up with our clamps, some of our other accessories. But the big thing to take away from this is that it's not a bracket plate, it's a standard plate. And this one is going to be just your standard um, quarter 20 screw that comes with it. It's going to come right in here go into the bottom of your accessory or your camera, and then give you a plate that's uh, symmetrical. So now, if I want to put it inside this clamp, it's gonna be able to grab it from this side or this side, they're symmetrical. So you can put it on an object, whatever you want, clamp it at either side. Whereas here on that PX1 and the PX1R, it's only clampable on one side. There's no dovetail on the other side, as you can see there, so it's not gonna be able to clamp down on here. There you go. You see that? It doesn't give you that opportunity. It's just not made for it. So it's only designed to fit on one side. So you might have to rotate your head, which is real common. A lot of heads on the market are going to either spin on the clamp or spin all the way around on your panning base. So you're going to be able to put your camera in on these and people are going to be like, oh, but my clamp doesn't move at all. But just loosen your panning knob. Your panning knob moves. So you're going to be able to get it to work. Uh, where's the PX, PSQ one, sorry. Um, being that it's square, it's going to give you that opportunity to kind of put it on whatever. Um, I'll go ahead and mount it here on this Nikon, just so you can see the size difference. You can see that it is going to stick out now with a little bit of a flange. PSQ1, it's a good option for some of you guys out there. Uh, the next one that comes up that's also not a bracket plate, it's our last one to show you today, is going to be the PXM1. Now this plate, is an ARCA compatible plate. And then when you rotate at 90 degrees, it's RC2, um, which is gonna be our PL200, which is the Manfrotto mount, which is found on a lot of the pistol grip tripods, as well as their magic arms. And even some tripod heads have this. So if you have the little plate where it goes in and presses down and clicks, uh, it's got like a gray kind of dovetail on there, and it looks kind of square, that's uh, gonna be able to allow you to do both the ARCA and the RC2 
So we've actually designed it. Um, one side here is almost 1.62 inches off the top of my head, and the other side is more like 1.5, which is going to be your Arca. So once you mount something to it, and an Arca compatible um, tripod head, that's what I have here. This is our BH1, at least it's Arca, and I can show it to you. It's going to go in there and lock down. Now if I try the other side, it's not going to fit. See how it's a little bit bigger? Um, that's designed to go in on that Manfrotto PL200, otherwise known as RC2. This is a great hybrid plate. I happen to have a lot of old video equipment. We've got the pistol grip. I've even got the magic arms. I was kind of locked into that RC2 system for a long time. Start getting new other tripods and stuff. They happen to be Arca. So this little plate here is a hybrid. It's a great opportunity to go ahead and expand and be able to use a little bit of all your equipment without having to fumble through and get different plates. So the PXM1 also features our strap loop adapter, which is pretty key and pretty awesome. So if you have our strap, um, the SS2P1 or the SS2P3, you can go ahead and put it right in there and actually carry your gear. This is my go-to plate when I'm on vacation a lot. I know I don't need a lot of accessories. I'm not taking my boomerang, but I want to carry my camera and still have a nice small plate. This works really well. There's nothing really I need to show you to put it on. But you get the idea. If you just get the size comparison again, this is the standard PBX3, which is going to be the plate with the holes here. And this is going to be your PXM1, which is the hybrid plate, which is about half the size. So I brought up a clamp, the CB60 version two. Thank you, sir. And this clamp is going to allow you to say, hey, I've got arc of plates at home. Maybe you've already got one that came with your current tripod at home. Or maybe you uh, would like to purchase one of these other ones that we have. It's going to be an Arca clamp. On the side of this clamp, you see these holes here? This is our bracket plate holes. So these are great. Say you already own an L bracket. Say you already own maybe this little plate right here. And you're like, this is great. This is all I need. But now I want to add the boomerang flash bracket. But I wouldn't mind adding the HB70 handle. And our stuff works with these modular portholes. So what you would do is have your camera with the small plate on it already. You're going to be able to grab it with our clamp. And then I like to put the clamp knob under my lens. It's just convenient for my shooting style. It doesn't get in the way of my face. Set it up on the end here. Like that. I can still get to my lens, everything. It fits in the cradle of my hand. It's not bothering me. If it didn't fit your shooting style, this can be turned backwards. But now I've got my plate, everything on this nice little package. And because of these portholes here that we make at Pro Media Gear, you can put the handle on it. So now I can put the HB70 over here and some other accessories as well. Um, it's going to give me a quick release strap adapter, which can't be found on the little plate. So that's going to give me the opportunity to use my quick release strap. Um, still easily get to everything. But then what makes it kind of nice is that I can just take it off. So if you already own an Arca plate at home on one of your cameras and you're looking to go ahead and add um, some of the modular capabilities that we offer at Pro Media Gear, the CB60 version two clamp is gonna allow you to clamp on any Arca surface, offer these portholes, give you the ability of a quarter 20 screw so you can still put a monopod, another plate for another type of camera or something on the bottom if necessary, and then also have our port for the strap. That's all I've got for you today. What kind of questions we got, Tom? Anything? Pricing range is about $20 for the PXM1, which is one heck of a price for a hybrid plate like this. Um, your standard plate, the PBX3, uh, is going to be $49.95. Um, let's see. PSQ1, off the top of my head, $19.95. Sound about right, Tom? Clamps are also around 40, 50 bucks, depending on the clamp. Uh, the stuff, all the aluminum accessories are made in the United States. We offer a five year warranty for manufactured defects. Um, if you happen to damage it yourself, also don't be really worried being that we're the manufacturer. In most cases, we do have all the little parts and trinkets to help you out and get you back shooting as quickly as possible. Um, or in some cases, even just be able to have you, you know, do an exchange if necessary. So feel free. Give our stuff a try. It's uh, promediagear.com. So Arca is kind of like Kleenex, where it's an approximate 1.5 inch dovetail that does fit many tripods on the market today. So a lot of ball heads um, that say Arca compatible, um, 
just have to look on your box or on the website where you bought it from. Um, there's many, many, many tripods out there today. It's kind of just what the basic system that was absorbed from the photo industry years ago and just kind of made into the mainstream. Um, with that being said, all of ours are ARCA compatible and held to a pretty high quality standard of the dovetail and everything. Um, it's recommended that they go in any kind of plate with a screw knob. That's going to give you the most opportunity to get um, any variations out for tightening onto a clamp. Um, but it does, our gear does fit really well onto other brands with a flip lock um, lever and other brands gear as well. Uh, it's pretty interchanging with our stuff. So ARCA compatible plates can be found almost everywhere nowadays. And these are just a couple little accessories that maybe you didn't know that Pro Media Gear also makes. Okay, so there's nothing about making it any necessarily better. Just the Arca in general was what was more accepted. Um, you don't see a lot of square tires out there. Somebody made a round one, everybody else made round tires. I mean, that's kind of how I look at it. Uh, the RC2 is a great system. I still happen to have things. Just as other um, companies out there kind of selected the Arca or Blu-ray over HD DVD. That's kind of the easiest thing to look at. They both kind of came out at the same time and then all of a sudden that Sony PlayStation, I believe, is the one that said, hey, we're gonna go with Blu-ray, and then all of a sudden, pff, HD DVD died. For some of you older guys out there, the beta, which was a much better than the VHS cassette, and then all of a sudden it was like, hey, but this is more affordable and smaller, and we like it. And then all of a sudden that kind of took took off, and uh, you don't see beta anymore. So it just happened to be the, the the one brand that stuck around, the size that everybody selected and kind of mimicked over the years, now became kind of the norm. Um, the RC2 is still a great system, and what stinks about it is if now you're locked into that, L brackets on the market tend to all be manufactured in what's considered an ARCA style, ARCA type, ARCA compatible format. Um, you're kind of pigeoned into that brand. So now you've got to buy their L bracket if they still make one. You've got to buy their ball head, their tripod. And everything has to be compatible for that. As long as that fits your shooting style and you can find what you want, there's nothing wrong with that. But as you want to take the opportunity to kind of uh, morph your system in. One day I got a little extra money, I buy a new tripod, and then all of a sudden I'm like, ooh, this, this head's different. And then you gotta try to think, how do I retrofit that head? And that was my first problem. Um, I ended up having an RC2 head, um, I had an RC2 uh, friction arm, and then I had another Arca um, camera, and I was like, ooh, now what do I do? So then on the Arca one, I happened to buy, at the time, a similar type clamp that I would recommend ours, uh, the CB60, and just mounting my RC2 plate that I currently had onto the bottom of my clamp. Uh, we offer a C60 clamp that doesn't have these portholes on it. It's gonna just make it an ARCA compatible uh, top clamp. And then that way I just would like sandwich this onto my current ball head I had. And then now this would become an ARCA ball head. And I would kind of transition everything over into one style as I got more and more gear. And then as I start buying different stuff, I would just make sure next time I bought something I bought the Arca, which was more standard at that time. Excellent, guys. Well, thanks. This is Workshop Wednesday. I'm Tony from Pro Media Gear. Please like us on Facebook, like us on Instagram, heart us, share us. Um, let us know what topics you guys would like to listen to and hear. Um, we'll do our best to kind of morph it into a program here on Workshop Wednesday. We look forward to seeing you soon.